Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my September wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about the books that I read in the month of September. So in September I read eight books, um, which is not that many for me, but one of them was a thousand pages long. And also I did have quite a busy month in September. Me and Nick, who some of you will have seen in videos on this channel before, got married in September, um, which is very nice. And then obviously, you know, quite a big event in life. Um, so, you know, quite a busy month. But I also did manage to read many good things as well. So let's get into the books. So first off, I reread Jane Eyre for Marissa from Blatantly Bookish's Bronte Project, where we've been rereading a lot of books by the Brontes this year. Um, so I listened to Jane Eyre on audiobook. I listened to the audiobook narrated by um, Juliet Stevenson, which is very, very good and I would highly recommend. And I loved I loved my rereading of Jane Eyre very, very much. I'm not actually certain how many times I've read Jane Eyre. I think this is the fifth time, but I'm not certain about that. It might be the sixth time. Um, but anyway, I love Jane Eyre a lot. It's one of my favourite books. It's one of my favourite Victorian books. It is the book that got me into Victorian literature when I read it when I was 13, and it just introduced me to the whole world of the Victorians. So I love it very, very much, and I'm very fond of it, and it has a lot of like nostalgic sentiment for me, as well as being a wonderful, wonderful book. Jane Eyre, if you don't know, tells the story of a young girl called Jane Eyre from her childhood into her adulthood and um, her experiences as a child um, neglected by the relations she lives with, her experience at boarding school and her experiences becoming a governess where she goes to a house called Thornfill Hall where um, she meets the master, Mr. Rochester, who is a very interesting and compelling man, um, but things at Thornfield Hall are perhaps not quite what they seem. Everything goes on from there. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. There's so much I love about Jane Eyre. I, I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten how much I loved it, to be honest. Like, it was so nice to reread it and just remember how amazing it is. Especially to listen to an audiobook, which I often find a really powerful experience and I hadn't listened to an audiobook before. I love rereading things on audiobook so much. I love Jane Eyre as a character so, so much. I think she's such a compelling, interesting character and I I love the speeches where she's just like, I deserve happiness, like I'm as important and as human as other people even though people look down on me, even though I'm obscure, plain and little. Like the moments where she like claims equality to people who her society would view as senior to her, I love that. I think the way that Jane Eyre as a book is kind of pro feminist and, and kind of like individualist as well, I love and I think is powerful and wonderful. I also love the setup and the gothic stuff in Jane Eyre. I love the way it looks at class and gender and relationships. Um, I really like Mr. Rochester as a character. Like, obviously, I think we could all accept that he's not like the greatest guy in the world, but I do think he is really, really well drawn and I think he is really interesting to read about. And I think he is a very fully fledged, complicated character. You know, I think the first time I read Jane Eyre, I just really loved Mr. Rochester. And, and now when I reread Jane Eyre, I'm like, oh, I'm so cross with Mr. Rochester. But also I think he is such a well-drawn character. And I just, I just love Jane Eyre very, very, very much. Ages ago on this channel, I did a ranking of the Bronte books um, where I said that I liked Villette more than Jane Eyre and that Villette was my favorite Charlotte Bronte novel. And I just don't think that was actually true. Having reread both Villette and Jane Eyre this year, I think I love Jane Eyre more. And I think I do love Villette a lot. And I think Villette's really underrated. And I think probably the fact that Villette is so underrated made me want to like love it more. But actually, actually, I just love Jane Eyre more. Maybe I even love Jane Eyre as much as Wuthering Heights, which I usually say is my favorite Bronte book. I don't know. I, I love it. I love it an awful lot. So good. Oh yeah, it's been such such a lovely one to reread because I'm just so, so fond of it. Another classic I read this month was this. This is Captains of the Sands by Jorge Amado. And this is a Brazilian classic from the 1930s and one that I think I really enjoyed. I have slightly mixed feelings, but they're mostly positive. Um, so this was a really, really interesting read. Um, it tells a story of a group of young boys living on the streets in Brazil who are um, thieves. They're all kind of teenage boys um, who have nowhere to go. They're orphans um, and they make their money through crime. And it's about their relationships with each other and also with various other people um, and kind of mostly focuses on a few of the kind of central figures of this gang called the Captains of the Sands. The book is very episodic it doesn't really have like a straight through plot exactly it more has like chapters um following the adventures of these characters it's a weird one because there are moments when it feels kind of peter pan-esque um and moments where it feels sort of 
not what Oliver Twist actually is, but what people think Oliver Twist is. Like the popular image of Oliver Twist and the gang of boys in popular imagination. Like it feels quite like that, but at other times it is so, so, so much darker. Sort of more kind of Lord of the Flies-esque. Um, in general, I've, I thought this was a really great book and the writing is really strong and powerful. The characterization was really interesting. The main thing I struggled with was the kind of gender stuff in this book um, and the way that some of the female characters are presented um, and also some of the sexual violence in this book. I think that's something to be aware of going into this book and probably held the book slightly back for me. I think basically there was one chapter of the book and if you'd taken that, that chapter I would have liked the book a lot more. Um, but in general I did think it was a really interesting read um, and I really liked the writing so I would definitely be interested in reading more by this author in the future. Then this month I also listened to an audiobook, Lord Edward Dies by Agatha Christie, which Nick and I listened to together. We are slowly working our way through all of Agatha Christie's Poirot books in order on audiobook. I really, really enjoyed Lord Edward Dies. I would say it is one of my favourite Poirots so far. Um, there are still a couple that would beat it, but it's probably like in the, the upper half of my Poirot love. Um, it was a really, really strong story. Um, as you might be able to guess from the title, a man called Lord Edward dies, and the question is, who did it? He has a wife that he was separated from, a daughter who hates him, um, a nephew who he has quarrelled with, and lots and lots of enemies in his life who might have wanted to do away with him. So everything goes on from there. It's a really great, compelling mystery, um, one of those ones where you're, you know, kept guessing to the end, as you so often are with Agatha Christie and, and you know I always love Poirot and Hastings very very much so a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable read as Agatha Christie always is and I really really love listening to Poirot books on audiobook especially. Moving on to contemporary literature this month I also read a contemporary thriller Just My Luck by Adele Parks which I really enjoyed. I haven't read any Adele Parks before um, but I've been meaning to you for ages because she's quite a popular well-known author in the kind of space between thriller and commercial women's fiction, um, like Leanne Moriarty, and I really, really like that that area of the thriller genre that's slightly more towards women's fiction. Just My Luck follows um, a woman called Lexi, her husband and her children, and what happens when they win the lottery, um, and they were previously for 15 years part of a lottery syndicate but we know from the beginning that the week before Lexi wins the lottery um, the syndicate has broken up um, which means that once they win the lottery there's a lot of tension about the fact that that syndicate has just ended and there's also a lot of tension coming from lots of different quarters so everything becomes very tense and complicated um, and what should be like this amazing fantastically positive thing that's happened to them ends up being rather negative and complicated and everything goes on from there. I really enjoyed Just My Luck and um, it's very twisty and turny and I liked the kind of solutions and mysteries resolving themselves at the end of the novel especially and um, I feel like the final few chapters were very good so definitely one I would recommend. Then this month I also read Our Doris by Charles Heathcote. Um, Charlie, if you don't know, is a booktuber. I will link his channel down below and I've been watching his videos for years and years and years so it's very nice to finally read one of his books um, because he often speaks about his writing on his YouTube channel um, and I just have been meaning to read something by him for a very long time so very nice to finally read Our Doris. Our Doris is um, an episodical novel I suppose or maybe a novella in a series of vignettes would be a good way to describe it and it's all about a woman called Doris and her husband Harold told from the perspective of her husband Harold and they're both in their um I can't remember if they're in their 60s or their 70s but they're a little bit older um and they've been married for a very long time and Doris is quite difficult um in many ways and it's basically about Harold's relationship with Doris um, and their kind of complicated interactions with the small town that they live in. Also at the same time you do get a sense of why Harold and her do work as a couple um, and why although Harold does find her quite difficult they do also have a kind of strong connection. I thought the relationship between them was done really well and the characterization of both of them um, is really really strong so I really thoroughly enjoyed this. If any of you have seen the um, old British TV programme Keeping Up Appearances and enjoy that, then I think you will really enjoy our Doris. It reminded me a lot of Keeping Up Appearances, but like a northern, slightly less middle class version of Keeping Up Appearances in a really, really fun way. Um, so if you like that, then I think you'll really like our Doris. And it was just a really, really fun read. Then I also read Astral Travel by Elizabeth Baines, um, which I was sent a review copy of ages ago and finally got round to reading. I really like Elizabeth Baines. I've read quite a few of her short stories before um, and this is a novel and this um, is all about this complicated messy 
difficult family. Um, we're following a woman called Jo who is looking back on her life. Her father has recently died. Um, she's always had a very complicated, tough relationship with her father where they've never got on at all. He's always treated her badly um, and she's never really felt that she's understood him. Um, and so this book looks at her kind of trying to understand him more after his death. Um, and it's structured in a really interesting, like, layered way. It's kind of hard to explain. So in the first section of the book, Jo is looking back on her life and her childhood and we get to know quite a few things about her childhood. And then as the book goes on, she learns more about her father and we get kind of like reinterpretations of her childhood. And she begins to like understand things in different ways and we get like different memories that kind of piece together the gaps. So basically this book is a book that looks at memory in a really, really interesting way, which is something I love in literature. I always enjoy a book that looks at memory in a complicated and interesting way and I think astral travel does it really really well in the way that Jo slowly unfolds kind of more information about her father um, and also her mother and her siblings as well um, and how that kind of changes her perspective on them. I really enjoyed the structure of this book I think it works really well and it was such a interesting and compelling read a really kind of fascinating character study with a lot of really interesting themes going into it as well so this is one I would highly recommend a really really interesting read and if like me you like a book that looks at memory as a theme in a really interesting way then I think this is one you'll enjoy. Finally I have two works of historical fiction which I read this month both of which I absolutely loved and um, one of them is this this is The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil which I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this is a wonderful book and so so entirely up my street this book is set in the Victorian period and we're following a few different characters chiefly a woman called Iris who is working in a um shop that makes dolls um, and she is kind of unsatisfied with her life um, and towards the beginning of the book she has a new opportunity to become an artist model. She has always painted and she really wants to be an artist so she agrees to swap modelling services for um, painting lessons and we follow her introduction into the world of art and her new connection with the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. And then we're also following a man called Silas who is a collector and a kind of taxidermist I suppose and then we're also following a boy called Albie who is sort of in the underclasses of society um, who makes his money by running errands and we're following all these various characters and how they're linked together. There was so much I loved about this book. I thought it was fantastic. The plotting and the pacing is very very well done and like the, the pacing of the characterization is fantastic. Like the way you slowly understand more about these characters works brilliantly. Um, I love the way this book looks at its historical setting. I love the way it looks at love and obsession and art and kind of like social values at the time. Um, the way it explores all these things is so clever um, and I thought it was wonderfully, wonderfully paced. Like the pacing is so good. I love the ending and I thought it was just such, such a good read with so many wonderful themes. I just, oh yeah. This, this book was fantastic guys, it was so good. Really, really flew through it, absolutely loved it. Just, just my kind of thing. I think this is a book that if you enjoy a lot of the historical fiction that I talk about on this channel that I like, then I, I think you'll really love this one too because it is fantastic. Um, Elizabeth McNeil's new novel, Circus of Wonders, has just come out and sounds fantastic. So I'm very, very excited to get to that as well because this was, yeah, this was a truly fantastic read absolutely absolutely my kind of thing but now we come to the main event as it were of september which is this i finally finally read jonathan strange and mr norrell which is very long it is a thousand pages long and ah, uh, this was so good this was so good another absolute favorite of the month and probably the year oh it was so fantastic i'm so glad i finally read this i've been meaning to read this for so long but it is so long that it has taken me a while so Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is sort of a historical fantasy novel. It is set in an alternative version of early 19th century England where there used to be magic in England, um, but magic has kind of fallen out of favour, hardly anyone does magic anymore, and now magicians are not people who practice magic, but people who study magic. That's a stage play at the beginning of the book, where suddenly the society of magicians in York discover a man who is a practicing magician who can do magic. Um, and then everything goes on from there and we follow these two new magicians of the age, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, who 
kind of together end up sort of bringing practical magic back to England in the early 19th century. And it's all kind of caught up in the Napoleonic Wars as well and the society of this time following these two magicians who have very different opinions about like magic and the history of magic. But to be honest, one of the things I love about this book is that I don't think it's actually about Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell, and actually I think it's about all the other people that you meet. Because at the same time that we're following these two upper-class white English gentlemen, we're also following two female characters who are affected by um, the magicians and their work, and then we're also following two men who are lower class. One of them, Stephen, is a black man who is a butler to um, one of Mr Norrell's friends, and one of them, Chaldemas, is um, the servant of Mr Norrell. And what I really loved about this book and one of the reasons why I loved it so much is that not only is the world building amazing, not only is the character fantastic, not only does it warrant its length, not only is it rich and beautifully written but also it's all about like early 19th century society and it explores gender and race and class and prejudice um, and kind of social stratification in such a brilliant way and I love the fact that like these two upper class gentlemen think that they are like the leading people in the world like they think they're splitting the world between them they think they are the most important and actually there's so much going on that they don't know about and there's so much they don't understand and actually the characters who are not male not white not upper class are much more involved in magic than they think and they think magic is kind of the sphere of like the gentleman and actually it's not at all and i just i love that i thought it was so good the way this book like looks at a 19th century society and uses magic to like explore all these themes is just fantastic and that's what i loved i loved so much much about it but that especially so good and everything about this book was so good like you know I look at this book and I know that it is long but it didn't feel long reading it um it just didn't because it is so compelling and so good and the pacing is great and yes it follows lots of the kind of side characters and lots of different points but that is quite important and kind of brings everything together in this clever way um and it does all feel relevant like I don't think you could get rid of anything in this book without lessening it because it's just it's just so good and the world building and the pacing and the ending like like, I loved it. I loved it so much. Oh, the more I talk about it, the more I love it. So good, guys. This book. Highlight of the month. Well worth its length. You should all read this. You really, really should. I can't believe it's taken me so, so long to finally get to this, but I just adored it. And I can't wait to read Piranesi, her other book, um, which has just won the Women's Prize and is much shorter. So hopefully I'll be able to get to that and it won't take me quite so long. So those are the books that I read in the month of September. Do let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Um, and that's it for now. I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.